Delegates, I'm very proud to be here and proud to be representing two different organizations, uh, both of whom are officially backing the People's Pledge. The Scottish campaign against Eurofederalism has been campaigning against the undemocratic character of the EU since the 1990s. It has got broad cross-party support and backing from a number of major trade unions in Scotland. It has got supporters, I should say, who are both nationalists, including ex-MPs like Jim Sullers, and those who are not nationalists. But all are united in one understanding, and that is that the current slogan of the Scottish National Party of independence in Europe is a contradiction in terms. <laughs> there can be no such independence. And I want to make one other thing clear as well. In Scotland, we had a united campaign that included the SNP, included key members of the Labour Party, the trade union movement, and the Green Party against Euro membership. We also had commitments from the SNP and the other parties for a referendum on the Constitution. And all the opinion polls in Scotland showed that there would be a strong majority against that constitution. So it is a bit of a myth to think that in Scotland there is a pro-Euro majority. There isn't. It needs to be tested. And that is why we do need this referendum. The Scottish campaign is based mainly in the trade union movement in terms of its basic organizational affiliates. And opinions there are changing. I'd like to read you the final paragraph of a resolution passed at the Scottish Trade Union Congress this year in air, proposed both by the RMT and by one of our affiliates in Scotland, Clydebank Trade Union Council. It was passed virtually unanimously. There were two hands against in an audience of 300. It reads like this, the final paragraph. Given the irreconcilability of almost all TUC agreed policies for economic recovery with the terms of the Lisbon Treaty, Congress calls for the establishment of a working party to identify alternative models of economic cooperation internationally that are not deflationary, which do not exclude public sector investment in the productive economy, which do not require the privatization of social utilities, which protect and enhance workers' rights to collective action and preserve our democratic rights to determine economic and social policy. Passed this year in air at the Scottish Trade Union Congress. A new constituency on the left and in the trade union movement is opening up and the leadership of both the Labour Party and the SNP in Scotland better take note. <laughs> However, I'm also speaking here as International Secretary of the Communist Party of Britain and I bring its support and greetings to this meeting. The Communist Party has consistently campaigned against and opposed the anti-democratic character of the European Union since its inception and in Britain for five decades now. And so also are an increasing number, not all of them, but an increasing number of the Communist parties across Europe, including those at the heart of the current crisis in Portugal, in Ireland and Greece. And I think we all remember that great poster that went up on the Acropolis last year, I think it was, saying, peoples of Europe rise up. And in remembering that, we should also remember the great demonstration that took place in Athens just two days ago of 100,000 people demanding that their democracy be preserved.
That should give us confidence as well. <laughs> Communists oppose the EU because it is always enshrined at its heart, in its constitutional treaties, the principle of the unfettered market and placed this unfettered movement of labor and capital before the rights of the people of Europe in their own parliaments to choose how they should control those markets. On this basis, the EU is inherently anti-democratic. Recent events have demonstrated this with crystal clarity. We see at this moment the EU crushing the democracy of national parliaments in the interests of big business and of the banks and in doing so, subordinating not just the interests of working people, but of small and medium business, professional people, scientists, farmers, and the fishing communities. And of course, in Scotland, we know a lot about that. John, I'll finish. Yep. Yep. The, Co the Communist Party, therefore, welcomes this conference in bringing together people from across the political spectrum to defend one common principle, and that is our democratic right to vote on our economic and social future. Nothing could be more important than that. Many thanks for listening. Thank you.